hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD. Today I'm going to go over future life plans moving forward as a budding oculoplastic surgeon. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new, I'm a third year ophthalmology resident. On the channel, I focus on everything about medicine residency, soon to be oculoplastic surgery, and all that good stuff. So go ahead, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in any of that. Today, what I wanna go over is kind of my future plans moving forward for just my life in general and my career, what I'm hoping to kind of achieve, at least the trajectory that I see the career going as of now. So I think it's important to have kind of at least a North Star for where you are aiming to go and then just kind of being very open to taking you know paths that show up along the way that you weren't really expecting so I'm I have kind of that overarching destination that I think I'm going toward but if new opportunities and things arise along the way I just kind of jump on them that's kind of my overarching theme with how I kind of let my life my life flow basically. So at least with medicine, the overarching goal is to kind of become an ophthalmologist and along that route, you know, I started going down some different paths. I looked into doing some different types of fellowships that aren't even really exactly traditional ophthalmology fellowships. And then I ended up getting into a fellowship that I wasn't even really planning on doing in the first place. So really just having that North Star of knowing I at least want to go in this direction, but allowing for serendipity to kind of take hold uh, when it does and kind of follow that I think is a good way to go about things. For me at least, I don't want to be too structured and too rigid with a life plan thinking it has to go like this. So I'm just kind of letting things happen. But in this video, I want to show you at least where I think things are heading. All right, so let's get into some of the options that we have now that we've matched into a fellowship, kind of where we're going to be going forward with it. So we did college, we got into med school, and then went into residency, didn't know what residency we were going to do initially when we got into med school, but ended up going the ophthalmology route, so eye surgery. And after that we matched, well, this was kind of a fork in the road. So the question next was basically whether or not to do a fellowship or go straight into private practice, straight into comprehensive ophthalmology, and basically be a cataract surgeon, do LASIK, do MIGS, all that kind of stuff, or do a fellowship, become more subspecialized after ophthalmology. That is ultimately the route that I ended up going, was to do the fellowship. For me, that's oculoplastics. And so that's kind of where I am now, about to start the oculoplastics fellowship here in a few months. So the question is what to do after that. So that's what our options are and kind of what I'm gonna be looking at going forward. So one is to basically become an employee. Within that kind of sector, I could go the private route out in the, you know, private realm of practicing um, as an oculoplastic surgeon. And some things that that might look like would be either working for a group, um, kind of a group of ophthalmologists that are different subspecialties, or it could mean actually being a contractor where basically I contract out to different practices. So I would work at multiple practices and be the plastics guy for those practices. So that's one option. Other option is to go into academics. So that's kind of the employee route. Another option after fellowship, rather than go the employee route, is to start a solo practice. So the nice thing about oculoplastic surgery is that there's not a ton of overhead. It's one of the nice subspecialties in ophthalmology because you don't have to buy a ton of equipment to be able to do the subspecialty. You know, you basically are just looking at a patient and deciding what surgery they need. And it's by and large a very surgical heavy ophthalmologic subspecialty. So it's not a lot of medical management of things. It's surgery, it's looking at a patient, helping them decide what surgery is best for them, and then doing the surgery. So we don't need a ton of overhead. So this is a good option for oculoplastics. Another option is to actually do the fellowship that I didn't match into in innovation out at Stanford. I made a video on this innovation fellowship at Stanford where they teach you to kind of innovate, partner with industry, and bring products to market. I thought it was a super cool fellowship. I didn't match into it, but that is also an option. Another option, and I'm not sure how feasible this is, but it's something I've just been kind of toying with the idea of and kind of getting a little bit interested in recently, is actually trying to get into a facial plastic surgery fellowship. 
I don't know if that's feasible or even possible, if that's allowed, but it's something that I might be interested in as kind of expanding on oculoplastic surgeries, doing maybe some facial plastic surgery training. So those are the options. Uh, another option would be, and this is, so this is kind of the route. Those are kind of the main options. And what I think I'm gonna end up doing is probably after fellowship is going the employee route to get a little bit of experience out in the private sector, build up my surgical skills a little bit better, take some call, work on some trauma, you know, kind of build the surgical skills and also learn the business side in the private sector. And then once I feel comfortable with that after maybe a few years, one or two, maybe one to three years, depending on how it goes, I will look to possibly start my own solo practice, actually go out on my own, open an oculoplastics practice, hang up my shingle and take the risk of doing that. Because for me, the risk, uh, is definitely outweighed by the potential reward of starting my own practice and kind of building something that is mine, something that I can put my name on and something I can be proud of and actually building it into something bigger. So that's the goal I think is to go the employee route, get some experience and then open my own place as a solo practice initially. And then from there, I hope to partner with some really talented oculoplastic surgeons because by and large, the oculoplastic surgeon community, the people that get into ASOPERS fellowships are just really like grade A people, top of the line people that you would be happy to partner with. So I hope to partner with some of them and expand into a larger oculoplastics group practice. Basically make my own large oculoplastics group and kind of become, build a name for ourselves in that regard. And then I don't really know exactly where I would take it. Possibly we would bring in some comprehensive ophthalmologist and then some optometrist. And then this would kind of actually serve as a referral network, an internal referral network. So patients that, you know, would get their glasses that would eventually need cataract surgery would be done by our comprehensive ophthalmologist. And then the, those patients that needed, you know, plastic surgery or wanted cosmetic surgery, that kind of thing. Uh, it would all be within the practice. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm hoping to head is to kind of get some experience, open a solo practice, build it into a multi-partner plastics group, and then potentially even expand that outside of plastics. I don't know if that part will work out or if we'll just keep it plastics. We may, maybe I'll just keep it plastics, we'll see. And then from there, I hope to eventually have my own ASOPERS fellowship because I really do like teaching. I enjoy kind of sharing what I know limited as it may be with other people. And so I like teaching a lot. So I would hope to have my own ASOPERS fellowship uh, that would be at my private kind of like multi-partner oculopa oculoplastics um, eye center basically. Uh, so eventually have that ASOPERS uh, fellowship of my own. And then, um, you know, put my own fellows out there into the world, maybe keep some in our practice that are really talented and then kind of build a name, build that practice, build the Keenum Eye Institute or whatever the heck we're gonna name it. But anyways, that's getting ahead of myself, but at least that is kind of the trajectory. That is my North Star, that is where I am headed, I think, is having my own practice, having my own Ace Opera's Fellowship, my own multi-partner oculoplastics practice. That's the goal, you know, that's the 10, 15 year goal um, down the line. We'll see if that works out. Um, the ASOPers, having the ASOPers may take a little longer if I'm ever able to actually do that, but that would be my goal. Um, and so that's just kind of my direction for the future, kind of what I'm seeing for myself, at least what I'm gonna try to achieve. And some of the things on the side, you know, the YouTube channel, how I think it will fit into it. Um, we're building, you know, we're building a good audience. I think we're building a community here, uh, basically trying to you know, have a platform for people that are interested in ophthalmology to share ideas in the comments, you know, kind of connect with people and network with people that are interested in what you're interested in, uh, in ophthalmology. So the YouTube channel will continue to build that, that base, kind of serve as a place for those people to gather. Uh, and then that combined with the Instagram following, you know, we will help, we will use that stuff to feed back in, to advertise for our, our practice, to show the good work that we are doing, to share our work, to show you know how we're changing people's appearance and helping improve their lives. And so all of that, all the social media, will feed back into building the practice, building the brand of our practice. 
Um, and so that's, you know, that's kind of where it's headed, I think, in the future. And eventually, when I have my own practice, you know, it'll be a lot easier for me to share things with you guys. I'll get to show you basically, you know, my you know, me, meeting a patient in pre-op. We'll go over how we examine them, look at them, what we think we can do for them. I'll take you guys into the surgeries and then eventually, you know, we'll see them in post-op and just kind of take you through the whole process. That'll be much easier when I have my own place, my own practice, rather than, you know, doing it as part of a, uh, in residency, it's much more difficult to do that kind of stuff. So in the future, I do hope to really expand uh, in that regard on social media and kind of sharing more with you guys um, in terms of what I'm actually doing surgically uh, and on, the, in the day-to-day -day of being an oculoplastic surgeon. That's where I hope to go with it. Um, and so we'll just continue to build it, continue to build the community. All this stuff will feed back into itself. These social media sites will continue to serve as a serendipity vehicle, as Ali uh, from his channel calls it. So I don't exactly know, you know, all of the opportunities that those things will open up, but just having them there and kind of putting everything out there, putting the work out there, I think it will open up avenues that I don't even know and don't even kind of have an idea that exist at this point. It'll just be serendipity. So that's kind of the future for me, what I think we're headed towards. So definitely hang around because big things are in the future and I wanna take you guys along for the ride. I hope you guys found that somewhat insightful to kind of know where I'm heading with my career and where we're gonna take the social media moving forward. If you did like it, subscribe to the channel and check out some of my other videos. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball and DLC. See you guys in the next one.